Hello, and good morning. Look who's back. It's the icon, the living legend, Tracy. Do you want me to say your middle name or are you weird about that? I'm not bothered. Tracy Jane Evans. She's back in the house. First and foremost, how are you doing this morning? How are we feeling? Good. <laughs> I, have an, I have an initial question. Go for it. Oh, guys, also, if you're watching this visually, I'm at my parents' house. That's why this is like a different setting, but hopefully it's cute. Um, I have an initial question. How do you feel about being an icon on the internet? <laughs> like, guys, she's actually got a great story that we're going to start off with because she told me yesterday and I was like, that's a good one to start with on the pod. Would you like to tell them the story about the woman on um, that came to you at work? Yes, I was at work the other day and a lovely lady came up to me and said, have I seen you... On YouTube, and I'm like quite possibly. Gag. <laughs> um, Did you know this woman? Yeah. Okay, that's fair then. Yeah. Well, I know of her. Yeah, I don't. I know of her. You okay. don't speak necessarily, but like. I say hello to her in passing. Oh right, but you were, you're not like good friends. No, no. Okay, no. that's that makes it better then, doesn't no, it? No, she doesn't know. Right. She, like she doesn't know I'm your son. No. That's crazy, guys. Guys, look at our reach. Look at the reach. Yeah. If you didn't know, me and my mum did an episode of my previous podcast, The Kitchen Sink. You were one of the first ones on, I think, weren't you? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. basically, I did a short, like a YouTube short, of one of the funniest parts of that podcast, where my mum basically got mistaken and thought... Because I basically asked her, what do you think of hom homophobia? And you said... Each to their own. <laughs> Because she'd got confused thinking that I meant, like, what do you think about homosexuality? <laughs> so, of course, um, it kind of goes far. Like, we've got, like, 60, 62,000 views on that YouTube short now. And it's kind of crazy. She's getting recognised at work, guys. Look at us go. But anyway, we're here today because, I mean, you guys have asked for my mum to come back on the channel, which I'm always down for. Um, and we w I want to do some advice for you all because obviously like you get my advice all the time but it's nice to get someone's advice from a different generation isn't it yeah well you are from a different generation you're not 20 anymore are you you've okay. you, you've been through life you've experienced a few things you've been divorced we, we could talk about your divorce don't maybe, yeah maybe, maybe we don't talk about your divorce <laughs> Um, but yeah, guys, so we're going to do some advice. The second one, if it carries on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been snoring. Yeah, guys, I'm not going to lie. I was laid in here and their bedroom's just that way. If you're looking visually, if you're listening to this audio wise, it's just on the other side of the wall that I, I was sleeping on. And I was also hearing my dad snore last night. He is a snorer, which I personally, I don't think I could be able to, be able to handle that. Take note, any future boyfriends, do not yeah, snore. Yeah, I, I can't have a snorer. I, I, and you've even tried like all the plugs and stuff, haven't you? For, like... Well, there'll be one plug that is getting <laughs> the permanent. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do some advice. But first, I wanted to start off with a game. Because I was watching a podcast the other day and they did this game on it. And I was like, this would be really fun with Tracy Jane Evans. Because guys, if there's one thing you should know about my mum, is that sometimes... She tends to say things quite interestingly. Like, she can't pronounce her H's very well. I can't H. I know, but, like, <laughs> in a word, she'll she'll say a H word starting with an A. It's interesting. But, yeah, so, basically, we're going to play a game of incoherent. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to go. I, I can't see the answers, so should we just do them together? Or I ask you, you ask me. I have no idea what you're doing. I'm going to basically read you a phrase that... To read <clears throat> makes no sense. Okay. But audio, and as we say it, mm -hmm. phonically, that's a word, isn't it? Phonically, um, the audience might be able to understand it, and then it's up to us to try and figure it out. Okay. So I'll do one to you first. Go for it. Canoe key pass a gret. Do you want me to do it? say it again? Yeah, go on. I'll try and like say it in a few different ways, just so it makes it a bit easier. Is it foreign? No, it, it makes words. Like, it hey. makes just a sentence, a random sentence. Can you keep a secret? <gasps> Can you keep a secret? There you go. See, you've got, yeah. you've got to try and say it, say it different okay. ways. There you go, okay. you read one. 
<laughs> Are you saying it a lot? <laughs> Del- this one, this one. Delete Elmer Maid. Don't look. I can't read the... I can't um, see the answer anyway. Say it again. Delete Elmer Maid. One more time. A different way. Say it a different way. Delete Elmer Maid. I don't know what that is. The Little Mermaid. That didn't sound like The Little Mermaid, did it? Delete. The Little Mermaid. No. No, I'm sorry. They've reached with that one. Okay, let's do another one for you. We're not keeping points, are we? No. Because I'd be losing. Jog, clay, de- die, scream. Jog on. <laughs> <laughs> Jog, clay, die, scream. Let's try and figure them out together because that's nice, right? Yeah. I think the end's got to be ice cream. Jog, clay, die, Jog, clay, ice cream. Would Chocolate you... ice cream. Yeah. Chocolate ice cream. Yeah. We won. Laddle, rat, rotten, hut. That's hard. Ladle, ladle, rat, rotten, hut. That's a fucking tongue twister. You try say it. Ladle rat rotten hut. A bit closer. Ladle hat rotten hut. <laughs> Ladle rat rotten hut. Ladle rat. What's that sound like? Let me speak it and you tell me what it sounds like. Ladle rat. Ladle rat. Well, what's Should ladle just... rat? Little red riding hood. Some of these are a bit of a reach if you ask me. Yeah, let's try another. My culture den. Den. My something children. My children. Michael Michael Jordan. (laughs) (laughs) Michael Jordan. Says Amy Street. Something street? Says Amy Street. Says Amy Street. Sesame Street. Sesame Street. She got it. She didn't get it. We're hey. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Yeah. Easy one. Period. Okay. Be foreign half her. Before and haft her. Before yes. and after. Yeah. I nearly I'm said slaying. different comes her. <laughs> it's a great movie. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. We should watch it again soon. I love that movie. Sock Herb Halls. Sock Herb Sock Balls. Sock Herb Halls. God, we're actually slaying this now. Yeah. Rap and Sell. Rap and Sell. Rap and Sell. People are going to be shouting answer. <laughs> I hope it's so. A rap and sell. Something and sell, surely. Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Shit. Hugh Nye Ted's dates. Hugh Nye Ted's dates. United. United States? Cut, yeah. United yes. States. God, what a, te- what a team. Um, we'll only do a few more and then we'll get into the advice because I feel like this might be getting boring. Mare Reap Hoppins. Mary, Mary Poppins. Poppins. Easy one, yeah. Hugh may I can idol. Eh? Hugh may I can idol. American Idol. Yeah. American yeah. Idol. Guys, we're getting good here. We've, I think we've tuned in. Leave me alone. Easy. That's leave me alone. Yeah, easy. Okay. Let's do, let's do two more. Do you want to try saying some? I hear a bit. Guys, you might be hearing a bit of Maddie Moo. Do you want to read some? Text her a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sip eighty doodah. Zippity doodah. Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah. Zippity doodah, zippity doodah. Doctor Zeus. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I s- You're not even going to check the answer. Oh, uh, look. <laughs> Doctor oh, no, Zeus. <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> Nay the Saint Eifer. Say it again. Nay the Saint Eifer. Say it one more time, a bit quicker. Nay the Saint. Nay the Saint. No. Nay the Saint Eifer. What are you saying? It wasn't Heine. Eifer. Is that what you said? Yeah. I'm, I don't know I'm unsure. It, I don't know how you say it. <laughs> um, have a look at it. I don't know what it is. Never say never. Nay. That makes is sense. No. Yeah. yeah. Never say never. Yeah, that makes sense. Around dove applause. Around dove applause. Yeah, a round of applause. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you just say it without even knowing? <laughs> <laughs> a round of applause. One last one. Mary had a little lamb. I know that. Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. 
Yeah. God, we actually slayed that. Okay, okay guys, yeah. let me know if you want us to do a, a few more of them in a future episode. Who knows? But we are going to get into some advice. But first, yesterday. So I'm here at my parents' house mm-hmm. because it's little Maddie Moo's birthday. It was Maddie Moo's birthday yesterday. If you didn't know who Maddie Moo is, she's one of my nieces. We'll insert a picture. Yeah. We will, because guys, basically <laughs> yesterday was a cake smash. Which I have a question. Mm-hmm. Is a cake smash just like a thing that people do? Or is it just like a thing that this family does? No, it's a thing that happens. Is it like, is it universal or is it more like Yorkshire based? I don't know. Maybe we'll look into it. Yeah. But, well, I guess, guys, let us know. Have you ever heard of a cake smash before for like a, ch- a child's birthday? Because basically the preface, while well, my mum's looking this up, the preface of what happens is my mum baked a cake, a really nice cake, right? Quite a pity to, to like destroy it. Um, did not go to waste, by the way, guys. Family members were all eating it. Off the floor. Absolutely. <laughs> but what happens is basically my mum baked a cake, really nice one, with loads of icing and everything. And it's basically just like a nice picture opportunity for the child's first birthday and for them to obviously have fun because what kid doesn't like making a mess in some cake? So, yeah, so she, my mum baked her a cake, a lovely one, and I'll be putting some pictures on screen if you're watching visually because I did, in fact, get my photography on. Oh, here's how Cake Smash became worldwide birthday tradition. So, so it, it is, is worldwide. worldwide, yeah. I'd never heard of it before we did it for the twins. No, I didn't either. God, that's crazy. Guys, let, let me know down below if you're watching this on YouTube, mm. if you've done a cake smash for anyone in your life, because they are very fun. Don't get me wrong, it took Maddie Moo a, a minute to get into it, didn't it? Yeah. But when she did get into it, guys, when her mum and dad went out the, win- went out, out the window, <laughs> when her mum and dad went out the door, she went crazy. She, like, the sugar must have hit or something. Um, but no, she had a great time. We got some great pictures. So that was phenomenal. We're having a little get together today. There's going to be another photo of a cake. Oh. And then we're going to say, spot the difference. Yeah, if any, I'm going to put a picture <laughs> on the screen now if you're watching visually. If not, I will describe. It's a picture of Maddie Moo's one cake. But there's something off <laughs> about the cake. I would like you guys to tell me what you think is off with the cake, okay? Because it's very pretty. It's a great, it's a great cake, but there is something off about it. And um, I didn't even realise until it was brought hence to me. And I didn't, and I made it. Yeah, and Caitlin didn't, and she got asked if it looked all right. But are you ready to get your therapy on, Mother? Yes. Um, I've picked out some good ones. Now, if you guys want to send in any um, advice or dilemmas or confessions or anything to the email, it's hello.morningglorypod at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure. But we've got a few really good ones. Which one would you like to start with? Maybe this one? Yeah, do that That's one. Juice. I can't actually read it. Oh, bro. <laughs> Lost him once, not by choice, but should I let him go now? Yeah. This one sounds interesting to me. She's put code names given, but I'm afraid, Mary, I am going to be using my own code names. <laughs> Years ago, I, Mary, yeah. um, dated my best friend, Joseph. Yes. Um, she's put Betty and Dylan, but fuck her. <laughs> um, I was head over heels and thought it was the best thing that had ever happened to me. He was there for me through some very tough times, and I guess I became very dependent on that being the case. He somehow always managed to make me laugh when I was sad, listen to me when I was lonely, and so on, and we broke up because I had to move far away. Oh, so that's why we, we broke up the first time. Okay. Because it was just like, she was Distance. moving away, following her dreams, whatever it mm. was. Right, love it. All that changed, and suddenly he stopped caring nearly as much, and very soon after he got with someone else, another friend, we'll call her Eve. Um, he didn't even tell me about her till, till a long time after they started dating and had had become serious. Well, that's fine. You so they were still in contact. I know, but realistically, you, you're not together anymore because you so had to move away. Matter. So he doesn't have to tell you, does he? Yeah. No. I wouldn't imagine no, no, so. No, no, no. Because also, like, realistically, if I'd been with someone then weren't anymore, I wouldn't want them to tell me if they were with someone else. No, because you wouldn't want their opinion. No. And also, it's just none of my business. Well, exactly. It wouldn't make me feel good, is my point. I don't think it'd make me feel very nice. I spent the following years always being the one doing the chasing. Oh, so she, so Mary continued to chase Joseph. Oh. <laughs> okay. Texting him, calling him up to make sure he was okay, trying to make plans to see him, and when I did get a response, he always had a had a very he had very little to say to me, and was always distracted by something or someone else. Eve. Yeah, but like also <laughs> like he, 
<clears throat> you're, we're not together, so why did you continue to chase him? I don't think we needed to do that. So, sorry, Mary. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like we may, we, we maybe have missed out some information here because it feels like they've maybe had a conversation after, like, you know, when she went long distance. Yeah. I'm wondering if they had maybe a conversation where it was very much like, if you come back, let's reignite things. Yeah. So she's maybe she like Mary's maybe come back into the situation and expected like things to fall back into how they were, and I don't think they have because he's now with Eve. But he's now with a partner. Yeah. Um. We've then got cutting a very long story short. He got engaged to her. Okay. Had two kids and then recently they split on good terms and now he wants to try again. I don't oh. like this. I don't like this. I'm sorry, Mary. I don't like this because to me. This is giving, like, we'll pick up and drop you whenever it suits. Well, no, because you could always look at it on the side of him as well, mm. where he was in a relationship happily with mm. two children, didn't want to do these things to Eve. Yeah, true. But now he's not in the picture and they're split on good terms. Now There's maybe nothing he's stopping thinking us. the time might be right for Mary. That's a wonderful way of looking at it. See, this is why she's here. That is a nice way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, I guess we're not going to know. Yeah, let's continue. Oh, God, this is getting a bit sad. Even though we hardly speak and haven't seen each other in such a long time, I care for him deeply, but I'm sick of chasing after someone just to end up getting my heart broken and and inevitably ending up alone once again. I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I just don't see how this could ever work out well for us. I feel like we were meant to be with, with one another. We would have already been together. That's fair. Realistically, if it had come back into the picture and he really wanted to be with her, regardless of like Eve, which is really shitty on Eve's part and the kids. Yeah. But if it was really meant to be and he really felt deeply for her, he might have just been Eve off and been like, look, sorry to you and the kids. It used to be so easy for us back then. I know we were younger then and things were a lot less complicated, but surely it shouldn't be this hard to keep someone close to you. If I'm doubting it, doesn't that say something? Yeah, I understand that you're doubting it. The thing, the thing I'm um having trouble with is why we were still trying to like chase him and like get back with him once he at all. Like, not gonna lie, Mary, it's a little bit shitty on your part. I think because why were we trying to chase after a man that had clearly moved on with a new girly, had two kids? Yeah. Like, I feel like, realistically, you maybe shouldn't have, and I know this is easy to say, because obviously you're in love we, with this person. Yeah, but we also don't know the situation, do we? No, but I know, but we've just got to give what yeah. we got, you know? Yeah, So I just feel like, obviously you were very much in love with this boy, but I feel like what we should have done is, when he wasn't really giving his attention back, maybe been like, okay. Maybe thought then. Yeah. Oh, that maybe we'll not go there yeah. and get us out broken. Yeah. And and obviously now that he's coming back, he's probably the thing is, people love to be in relationships. It's that like comfortability that I've talked about before. So I feel like he's probably just got out of this really serious relationship with Eve and mm. two kids. But also, does she know why their relationship broke down? Probably not. What did she Was say? Was it through him having feelings for, for her? Mary? Yeah, true. It says they. It just says they separated on good terms, and now he yeah. wants to try again. Maybe just so. Apart. Yeah, I think maybe they just didn't like <clears throat> each other or love each other anymore. Um, but that's good that they've kept it on good terms for the kids' yeah. sake. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it does feel a bit like he's now just coming back to you because he's got nobody else. Like it feels a bit reboundish to me. So let's continue because we've got a bit left. I'm also concerned where Eve would fit in with all this. I have no issues at, at all with him having two kids with her. I just feel like that's something I don't want to be in the middle of, especially since it hasn't been that long and he's clearly still healing from that breakup. Exactly. Okay, so is this maybe quite new? Yeah, I'm thinking so. I'm, I reckon he's, he's dropped even the two kids and now he's trying to get back with Mary. Straight away. Yeah. So? He needs to heal. Yeah. From this breakup, for yeah. sure. But this is the last part. He never intentionally hurt me, and he's always been there when I, it really counted. Should I take a chance, Brad, or is it something I have to leave bit leave be? I think... Now, here's just what I think, and then you can tell me what you yes. think. I think you need to remove yourself from the situation, because at the end of the day, I think, taking all the other stuff aside, I think you almost need to ask yourself, would you like to be a stepmummy in this situation? Do you know? 
Because obviously, realistically, who knows? You get back with Joseph, all things go well. But then you're thinking, oh, do we get married? Then you're soon to be a stepmom. That's, I think, first thing you need to think about. Now, I know that's obviously going to be down the line. But you're going to be in these kids' lives anyway if you are going to get with their dad. You know? Mm, yeah. and, and I just think, in general, it feels a bit hoppish. I don't, like, I, I don't love when people hop from one relationship to the other. And I think he's probably thinking a bit, oh, I'm a bit lonely. Let me find the person who... I've been with in the past, so I already know her. He ain't really got to do like the getting to know you anymore because he already knows you pretty well. You're you're just kind of like there for easy pickings, in my opinion. So I wouldn't be going back there. I think let him heal from his. Did they get married? Yeah. No, engaged. Engaged. Oh, so they never actually made it to the marriage. No, not with what's on there. No. Oh gag. Um, I'd let him just heal from that relationship because that because realistically, him and him and. Eve are going to have a lot a lot to discuss here. Like, how are we parenting? What we're yeah, doing with the kids? Yeah. How often you're seeing I don't, them? I don't think she should completely walk away. Not okay. Yet, not okay. yet. Okay. I think he does need time to... If this is relatively new, mm. I do think he needs time to figure himself out. I agree. Yeah, so we could maybe stay in contact at least and, and still figure be out his picture, intentions. Still be his friend. That's nice, yeah. Talk. Find out, she needs to know why the relationship broke down. Was it because of her? Yeah. Was it because of other things? It doesn't need to go into loads of details. No, but, but you just need to know if like you affected it, that was for it him. Eve? Yeah. Was it Eve that didn't want to be with him because she could see that he had feelings for somebody else? Mm. You know? All these questions could we don't be, know. This could be the other side of it. It might not be him at all. Mm. She it might She be. might have broke up with him, but then if, if she broke up with him, then that's why I almost think that's almost him looking for a rebound now for like comfortability if she did break up with him because mm. he's going to be going through it if that's the case oh yeah you know because I mean being engaged to someone and then obviously breaking up I don't imagine that's very easy at all now I've never been in that situation but yeah I imagine that's a rough one and and yeah I, I you know what I agree with you I don't think I don't think we need to remove ourselves completely but I also think keep my arm's length for now yeah and I think just see how it pans out. Don't rush into anything. Go it's... into Smith. Is it? Is, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Into Smith. Yeah, it, that intimacy. Word. Yeah. <laughs> you said it right, but just like a bit. <laughs> Left a bit, a bit out. Yeah, a bit, a bit interesting. Um, yeah, no, no intimacy. We're not kissing. We're not doing no bits. We're like we'll be there as someone for him to talk to as a friend. Yeah. Because he might need that right now. Yeah. Um. And I think yeah, just see how it goes because, like you said, obviously you, you you loved each other before before you had to go long distance and whatnot, and obviously that's why it broke down. But like you you never mentioned that there was any anything a bit interesting in their relationship before, did she? No. Just so that she moved away. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe you are meant to be, and maybe this was obviously how it was supposed to pan out. But I I just wait and see his intentions because I don't want him to pick you up, Mary, as a rebound, and then just plop you again. Because like you said... She's going to get hurt. Yeah, you don't want to keep getting your heart broken. So I think we'll be smart about it. And yeah, just stay in his life as a friend and just see how it goes. But I would love if you could email us in with a follow-up if anything else happens. I would love that. Thank you so much. But yeah, that was a so, good one. Good luck. Yeah, good luck with, with that. dilemma. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for writing in, Mary. Um, Let's do another one. This one says, this is a subject line. Okay. Random and, and unserious Valentine's double date to a long distance boyfriend. Now that's a wild trope. Okay, let's just yes. get in. Now this one was wrote in and directed to the both of us, right? They knew you were going to be on the episode. So right, okay. they definitely want you here. Um, it says, hi Brad and Mama Evans. First of all, love the pod and both you YouTube channels. I've been a proud subscriber for years. I always wanted to send in a dilemma for... Um, Brad advice, but I never had a juicy one. We'll wait for that to finish. <laughs> Rinse out. Pause. <laughs> this is what it's like, guys, being in the family home. My name is Mary, and I'm 18 years old. Two months ago, my friend and I did a two-week exchange together for work and school. We have known each other for, like, forever, so this trip was just pure fun and lots of do-it-for-the-plot moments. Guys, I'm so sorry if you're hearing water because just one minute in this room there's pipes. I'm just going to video. Yeah, love it. Let's start again. Okay. My name is Mary. 
I'm 18 years old. Two months ago, my friend and I did a two-week exchange together for school. No, for work and school. Yeah. We have known each other for like forever, so the, so the trip was just pure fun and lots of do-it-for-the-plot moments. Do you know what a do-it-for-the-plot moment is? It's fine if you don't. It's more of a Gen Z thing. Uh, oh. So I'm a Gen Z. Okay. I think you're a mil- millennial. Okay. There's a whole bunch of discourse around that. But basically, a do-it-for-the-plot moment is like... Do you know in a movie, like you kind of imagine your life as if you're in a movie. So like you're doing something, even though it might not be the best idea in the moment, but you're just like, oh, I'll just do it oh, for the plot. Oh, just do it, yeah. So it's like a fun story to tell. Yeah, yeah, do it in the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're not really thinking too much about things, we're just doing it for the plot, right? Okay, yeah. One of the main do it for the plot storylines that we ventured on was a random double date on Valentine's Day. That is really cute. Yes. Um, she found a guy on Tinder. They had good chat and, and I was dragged on the date for my exquisite matchmaking skills. Call me fairy godmother. Yeah. Wait, so we went on the double date alone? Like, we didn't have a date. Wait, no, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe get there. Because it sounds to me like we just went and tagged along as a best date, but that's a bit awkward if you ask me. But mm. anyway. Okay, let's carry on. Oh, no. Okay, it says the guys offered to pay for everything, so I was just there so for a good old time. He had someone. Yeah. yeah, must have had a friend that he brought along. Lovely, we love that. Yeah, yeah. However, the friend that was my date, oh my god. First of all, not to sound like a <laughs> what? Not to sound like a hunky punky Chad, but he was respectfully very hot. <laughs> love that. Um even better though, he was the kindest person ever and he was such a gentleman. We love. Yeah. Especially in this day and age. I'll tell you what, it's hard to find. Trust and believe. Um, after the dinner, we went for a walk around the city and the conversation flowed so well. So well that the evening ended in a steamy makeout sesh. Wow. Um, but he's a consent king, which I love. So I felt very comfortable the whole time. So obviously, like, he, he yes. wasn't pressuring her to do yes. anything. We love that. At, like, 1.30 in the morning, they followed us back to the hotel and we said goodbye. He texted me the next day and asked if we could see each other again. And because my friend and I... Um, had agreed that this trip was for the plot and the main character moments, I couldn't say no. Well, yeah, why not? You had a great time. Why would you not go and see him again? Yeah. Like, definitely. realistically, you, you've only gone on this trip, so who knows? After the trip, you're probably never going to see him again. Yeah. Well, I guess. It's what she was thinking. Yeah. Exactly. So I probably would have done the same. If I'd met someone on a trip, I'm like, oh, well, I may as well met the most of you while, you're, while I'm here. Yeah. Let's have a bit of fun. I mean, I didn't want to say no, but I used our little agreement as an excuse. He picked me up from my work, in parentheses, where I did the exchange. Pink flowers in hand. Oh, romantic. Oh, that's, yeah, so romance. Because he remembered that that's my favourite colour. And he had researched and asked his sister for the best gluten-free brunch places because I am celiac. Celiac. Yeah. How did the universe decide that I was worthy of all this? We had the best time, and honestly, the PDA was PDAing. Now, I can't go on board with that. I don't fucking like PDA. Do you know what that is? When, I've heard of it. When people kiss and stuff in public. Oh. Public displays of, of affection. affection. yeah. Yeah, that's not for me, but good for you, babes. Um, no, if we're walking down the street, you ain't holding my hand. Oh, see, no, that, that I'm fine <laughs> with. <laughs> that's just general touch, mother. Who is out there? I will knock you out. <laughs> be your dad father do you want to come in do you want to come in and say hi you can speak into the microphone hello <laughs> yeah that's my dad just making a whole bunch of fucking noise now get out and shush guys we will get through this episode at some point I swear um flowers uh, celiac <laughs> the PDA yeah. the PDA um like, it was kind of embarrassing, but I was so comfortable and it felt like I'd known him for much longer than two days. We ended up kind of fooling around at my hotel. Again, consent king, because he was always making sure that I was okay. We love. Yeah. The goodbye was kind of sad, to be honest. And he asked for my number so that we could text on the phone instead of social media. Fast forward to now, we've kept in contact and have FaceTimed almost every second day. So, like... Yeah. Every two days. That's wild. And I, fa- and I feel myself catching feelings. I've just never met someone like him. He's the, uh, he's the one initiating contact and phone calls. So I know that I'm probably not alone with these feelings. The problem is he lives in another country. We've talked about when we're going to see each other again, but both of our schedules are crazy and it's a very long trip. We've also both kind of made comments about how it low-key wouldn't be nice if we had something going on with someone else. So I don't know what the long-term thing is is 
in this. I feel weird bringing it up because long distance is A, hard and makes you feel kind of crazy. B, maybe also not the right step to take at all and it might be way too soon to even think about it. That's why I'm hoping that you will help me out. She's only 18, isn't she? Yeah. I don't... Look, I'm all here for the romance, right? I'm all here for these connections. Mm. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's wonderful. But at the ripe age of 18, do I think we need to be getting into something long distance with someone in, in another country? I'm unsure. Because you said that both of your schedules are like crazy, which I'm, I'm assuming is going to be like work, college, all these kind of things. Right? Yeah. I just do, I just don't see your world slowing down in any in any means over the next few years at least. No, that's what I was thinking. And is there gonna be compromise of will he come to you? Will you go to him? Yeah, I mean, I imagine yeah. there is because she did say that um, she's not the only one like initiating conversation and whatnot. Like he's also very much trying. So so it it does sound to me like it's very healthy and it's very balanced and. I, I, I like this. I don't think it's necessarily a question of does he even like us. I think it's very clear that he does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Um, and I, and realistically, I imagine both of you didn't see this maybe going as well as it did. Well, she only went for the what was for it for the plot for the plot exactly. So like you didn't. <laughs> I'm going to knock somebody out. I think <laughs> I would, in my personal opinion. Now you might have a different one. In my opinion, I think I'd let it be for what it was. You know, we had a great time. We had a lovely time while I was over there. But unfortunately, like, don't get me wrong, once again, I think we could stay in contact and see how it goes. Because who knows? One of you might move close to the other this is what in I the was coming just years. what I thinking is, like, she obviously went to this country for work slash school. Yeah. So, who's to say that she can't go there again for work. and stay? Yeah. If she wants to, yeah, and vice versa, oh, he might yeah. he might you don't decide know a, what he does, yeah, but... he might decide a um a, a way in which he could probably move closer to her. Like I'm not even saying like necessarily same town or city, whatever, but even the same country would be a yeah would be a handy thing. Yeah, I find it hard with long distance because I don't know if I could do it. Now, don't get me wrong, long di- long distance in terms of like in the same country, that's fine because I I am also a big believer in the fact that like I don't think we need to be in each other's pockets. Mm. I think. In, like when, whenever I get into my next relationship, I do plan on hopefully like having a good bit of distance there because I just think then when you actually do see each other, then you're gonna be like more excited. There's gonna be more to do, more to talk about when you actually do see each other. Like this boy that I'm talking to now, he lives in like like near Durham, I think, like Eversham. It's called. Mm. I don't know what that is. No. But like it's it's a it's a ways away. Yeah, do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I think in the same country is fine, and I think stuff like that you can make work because trains are very easy and all that kind of thing. Yeah, transport. Now, yeah. I think flights are something a bit different, especially if she said, like, it's a long flight, like, it's a big trip. Yeah, and being at such a young age, 18, yeah. are you financially able to do that? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't think that, I don't think. You know. I just feel like realistically, I, now I'm not, you didn't mention where you were from, but. I'm just going to take it as if you're in the UK, right? You might not be, but whatever. Like, realistically, in the UK, I feel like there's enough people for you to find somebody else that you have a good connection with. And also, you're only 18. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to be, like, worried too much about finding the love of your life. And I understand, uh, the thing is, the thing is that I'm having, like, an issue with here is, obviously, like, they've both had an amazing time and they've connected really well. So obviously they're trying to grab a hold of it while they have it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I would feel bad being like, oh, just sack it off. No, because you never know. Yeah. She could be messaging you in a few years' time saying we're married and we've got a baby and we've got an owl. <laughs> oh, lovely. And she listened to Mama T's advice. Yeah. And didn't give up on love. Yeah, no, it is true. <laughs> this is, it's, I think it's just another one of those things where it's just like, keep in contact and if it's worth it, do it, I suppose. What would you say, yeah? That? Yeah, yeah. She's not known him very long. The, well, this is the thing. Obviously, like, you you only have known him for, I think you said, like, two days, a couple of days, whatever. Like, that's not... Like, as much as, like, yes, you had an amazing time, it's very much honeymoon phase vibes. Like, he's not been able to really show you what he's like as a person for an extended period of time. Yeah, it's an holiday romance, the bad. Exactly. So yeah. it's just, like, I, I don't think we can necessarily judge... 
Although we ha- this is the thing, though. We have been speaking and phone calling since then. Yeah. So I'm sure she does know him well. I just think it's one of those things where it's just gonna, it's, you're just going to have to play it by ear, I think. I don't think bin him off because he's, he seems lovely. Yes, it does, yeah. And I think continue speaking and phone calling and if it happens, it happens. And like my mum said, like, you never know. Work or school or whatever might take you closer to him and vice versa, you never know. But I think try not to put too much weight and pressure on it because obviously, like, the thing is, feelings are going to get involved because... Did, did, wh- she's already said she's catching feelings. And d- was this a dilemma where she said, like, they both had kind of a discussion where they don't want the other to see other people? Yes. So it's getting to that point Exclusive. already where they're going to be in a relationship. Yeah. It may just... It may be fine. But always have your... Guard up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. This is what I tend to do. Now, this might not be very healthy, but I think when you get into something new, almost... Expect the worst, just because then if it happens, you're not going to be as shit. Like you're not going to be feeling as bad. Rather than getting your hopes up, hopes up, hopes up. Because the thing is, right? Alternatively, here playing devil's advocate, he's obviously saying to you, "Yes, I'd like to be exclusive, whatever." At the end of the day, he could just be saying this because we know how, how people like to just say things. Yeah. Right. He's in a different country. He knows that you're never going to find out if he ever did go and see somebody else, go on another date, whatever. So. What I'd say to you is, yes, he's said that he'd also like to potentially be exclusive and vice versa, right? I'd say keep your hopes under control. Almost think the worst and, like, expect the worst. Because, realistically, if he one day did did decide, oh, I've met somebody else, I don't really need to... Because the thing is, for both of you, I imagine it's going to be a situation where if you did meet somebody else in the same country, you're probably automatically going to be thinking, well... I'm going to pursue this more because it's easier, mm. you know? So I don't want you to get your hopes up and you be like, I'm not going to even entertain anybody else because who knows, he might be entertaining other people and you don't know. Yeah. And I think, yeah. It, I think it would be a little bit stupid of us, Mary. But he may not. I know, he I know. But, he may but, be the loveliest guy on earth and if he is, go for it. I know, but I just find <laughs> it very hard to believe that any straight man is not speaking to any oh, other women. shut up. Especially at that... No, I'm sorry. At this ripe yes, young age. Yes, but we don't know how old he is. True, but I'd like to think he's not 30. Exactly, but... <laughs> you know? Yeah, but she's you know 18. what? Some people are brought up a different way where sure. they have respect for women and they have manners and he's shown that in one way because he's true. remembered her colour, he's asked his sister, he's asked his sister, so he's gone to a family member to ask advice on what? On the celiac. She is celiac, but she didn't ask if it... I'm sure he asked. Read it. I don't think he did. He asked his sister where the best Wait, you might be right. Do you know you're <laughs> such a gobshite? <laughs> celiac, celiac. Uh, oh my God, you're, you're correct. He had research and asked his sister for the best gluten-free brunch places. Oh, gluten-free, not celiac. But, but that she did put because I'm celiac. Yeah. Yeah, so he actually asked. Yeah, he has spoke to family and yeah. asked. So this is what I'm saying, that some people are brought up... Well, I'm not even going to say correct because everybody's brought up correct. But... To respect. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to say that, but I just don't want Mary to get her hopes up and get heartbroken. No, we don't want her to be heartbroken. No, and see, see the situation for what it is. It's going to be long distance if it does happen, which is fucking rough and it's hard. It's not easy but to do. But you know what? It can. It can work. I will say this though, in 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 favour of long distancing. Yes, we realis- do have it. Yeah, yes. and realistically, I have a best friend that lives down London. It feels like I see him often because we FaceTime every day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the 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 that way long distance friendship. Yeah, it works because like FaceTime is so obviously advanced. It feels like you're you're literally there and you can FaceTime whenever. So there is that. The only thing you're not going to be having is obviously like the intimate parts, whatever, and all like the, the proper. Hanky, hanky. Yeah, you're not going to be able to obviously have that. <laughs> so it's going to be getting that under control. But in terms of contact, like it's very easy to stay in contact with somebody if you really want to. I just think be smart about it, be vigilant, because you are only young. I don't want you to get... Don't jump in. No. Don't jump in, because realistically, it's going to be hard if it happens. But it does sound lovely. He sounds really nice. I'm glad you had a nice time wherever you went. They didn't mention, but I'm glad you had a nice time. What's the saying? Don't go swimming, do the paddle first. I've never heard that, but I love it. I think I made it up. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, if you did, I like that. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Don't go swim and do the paddle first. I, Man, that's good. Yeah. That needs to be on a t-shirt. Oh. Oh, a mama t t-shirt. Guys, if you want a t-shirt, <laughs> don't go swim and do the paddle first. I like that. Anyway, do you think we answered our dilemma, dilemma there? Do you think we gave us some help? I think we did. Yeah. Just be smart and vigilant, okay? Don't throw yourself into something that's re- realistically going to be pretty difficult. But he seems lovely. So give, give him the benefit oh, of yes, the Oh, yes, round of applause for being a gentleman. Yeah, for giving you some fucking flowers at the very yeah. least. What's that now? That's fucking tap, isn't it? <laughs> I, honestly, these people in this house have no respect. You need to leave respect. some of it in. You need to leave some of it in. Guys, I'm sorry if you're going to be hearing some of these things. It's just so loud all day. It is. See, we've got this dance one. Should we do this dance one? Yeah. Because, I mean, because my mum's got... been... My mum's been, obviously, a part of my life. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Just a little bit. But, like, my mum used to, like, literally work at, a, at, like, the dance studio that I used to train at. Like, she she knows she knows one or two things about dancers and, like, the industry and whatnot. So, we've got one here from a young woman, Mary. Yeah. Um, and it says, Hi, Brad. First of all, sorry if this is a mess, but I'm wondering if you have any advice for me regarding a potential career in dance. I'm a sophomore in high school, grade 10 in the US. I'm out of breath. I just went and chastised me dad. <laughs> female and how and i've been dancing since i was three years old god so we've been we've been going for a while yeah yeah i have been competing in dance since the second grade lately i've been feeling a lot of pressure about looking at colleagues and planning for after high school colleagues colleges colleges yeah oh, I can't chop and read. um honestly the only thing that i feel really passionate about is dance and i would love to try and pursue a career in it but i'm not that confident in my skills i mean i feel like we're pretty we're qualified to talk about this because yes, realistically, we are, yeah. I went to uni for dance mm-hmm. and I'm not dancing anymore. No mm-hmm. So I know one or two things about the industry. So let's get in. I'm not that naturally flexible and I feel like there are many areas in which I need to improve my technique. I mean, you're so aware, she's of, it, aware of it. Yeah, you're aware of like your strengths and your not so much so strengths. So on uh, strengths, that's fine. Keep going. On your weaknesses, build up on Work it. Work on them. Do think there's a lot of things out there you can go to classes you can watch youtube videos yeah if you're passionate about something and like you said you are already i'm getting a good vibe because you're you're very self-aware which is good in the dance industry it is good because some people are really delusional not. delusional they, think boots. they are amazing yeah and wow but but like you know the areas mm. that you feel like you could improve on so if you're really that passionate and you want to pursue it as a career now this is a bit premature because it is a pretty lengthy one but i think if you do want to pursue it as a career you already know where to improve and, yeah. like, what's, what's going to help you get there, mm-hmm. you know? Let's continue. School-wise, I'm pretty smart. We love that. Yeah. That's going to help, trust and believe. Um, I take some advanced classes and, classes and I'm overall just trying to keep my options open because I don't have a clue what field I would choose to go into if not dance. Therefore, I put a lot of pressure on myself at school to do well in classes so that I keep my options open for college applications and stuff. But that means a lot of my time outside school is used up studying. Ah, so stop. Yeah, I have. But this is what I always said to you and Leah. Always have a second choice. Yeah, it's just smart. Because dance... It is a very hard industry to get into. And when you're in it, when you're in it, it's rough. It's rough. There's a and lot. There it's is oversaturated. So many people wanting to do that mm-hmm. that you are the minority yeah. in a big, big industry, especially as a female. And also, injury. Yeah. Hello. You get. I know injured. it well. Yeah. You've been injured. You get an injury. You're out of it. Mm-hmm. Not completely, because you can go down the other way. But also. She's wanting to perform, but if she loves dance so much, what about the teaching side of it? Or choreo- choreography, all these things. Yeah, there's different ways there's many of more getting avenues, into the yeah. dance industry. And But it also, not even just that, even like working behind the scenes on a show. Yes. Even just like getting a job at a theatre, so you're still a part of the yeah. industry. Yeah. Like you're still helping make a production. So even if you feel like that's not going to work out for you, or if it doesn't end up working out for you, being realistic... That's not the be-all and end-all of, of being in that industry. Do you no, know what I mean? No. Let's continue. Yeah. Because this is this, this is very interesting. I'm enjoying myself. Okay, so basically she's saying that, yeah, she, um, although she obviously loves dance and, she, and she's most passionate about dance, she's keeping options open. She's trying yeah. really hard in school. Yeah. But most of the time she does see it as a bit ridiculous when realistically the only thing she's passionate about is dance. So even though I have been praised by others at my dance school, teachers and fellow students... Perfect. 
Yeah, I, so she's I'm getting, being recognised. Yeah, I'm getting a sense that you're in your head a bit here. I think you're being a bit overly critical, which is not a surprise for, for a dancer here. Um, mind you, I come from a relatively small town. My dance studio was not crazy strict. It was more recreational than technical for the most part. I just feel like I'm not on the same level as other people looking looking to go into dancing careers, which I which is why I'm hesitant to commit to that career. But I watch a lot of dance-related content on YouTube. I follow various performers, choreographers, dance studios and companies, and I always feel so inspired and wish I could dance like they do. And every time I got got to concerts or see dance performances, I imagine myself up there on stage and it makes me so excited to think about it. Yes, dream big. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, right, you know, there's, uh, although, yes, it's oversaturated the industry, for sure, there's so many avenues, like freelancing, which is, like you said, kind of like music videos, performances, there's independent casting for, like, tours and stuff. Like, I went to a Spy Skills audition. Audition. And that was daunting to say the least um but i did do well in the audition they did like me but still but yeah it's just like realistically there's so much to do in the dance industry like my my best friend does freelancing he does music videos he's now working as a more of a mu- movement director for like professional photo shoots so even that's something yeah there's honestly so many avenues you can go down like if you're worried that like the performance aspect is not gonna work in your favour. But to me, so far, obviously we've got some more left. It sounds to me like you're very aware of what you can do, what you can't do, how what where you want to see yourself in the future. I think that's already a great thing. Mm -hmm. You've got you've got a good vision of where you want to see yourself and if you and if you really apply yourself, you'll get there. Because guys, I was shit relatively up until being maybe the age of like 14. And then I really Mm. turned it on and really tried my hardest. And then went to a ballet school. Yeah. You know, like, I, I wasn't, like, some child prodigy, I don't think. No. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I had, I feel like I had a knack for performance. You did, because you did freestyle. Yeah, like, I was quite outgoing, like, I enjoyed performing, and I think, like, especially more in my earlier years, I do feel like personality and stuff, it does come in clutch when you're younger. Yeah. And obviously, the more you grow and grow and grow, you've got to obviously become more technical alongside it. And the thing is, it's like, when you went from freestyle and we went to Elite, because mm. we can say where you went, that's fine, your technical side was yeah. then brought out and that's where you became a dancer. Yeah. That was just in a normal school. It has built up now into college and things like that. Mm. But amazing teachers. Well, yeah. but All the, round. But this is the thing. But I, I will say this, right. Teachers, great, love them. But it's, it's it speaks volumes to me that you're already like... You're at the point that I got to where you want to try hard and you yeah, want to improve. Yeah. And it takes that. Like, a person's got yeah. to want to improve for it because to happen. Because you weren't bothered no. at first. No. no. You only tagged along. Was it Leah that started dancing? Leah started first? first and then I went somewhere and then I ended up switching to go to Leah's. Yeah. I just feel like you already are at the point where you want to improve and if you really want to improve, you will. That's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, let's continue. We've got a bit lo- bit more left. Dancing makes me so happy. It's so fun and it feels so freeing that I can't imagine my life without it. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have heard about how competitive the dance field is yeah. and that it takes a lot of time and commitment, but I feel like dancing, some- dancing is something that I want to commit myself to. And I wish I could currently put all of my time into it, but school makes that pretty difficult. So I guess I'm just wondering if there there's any suggestions like whether I should go for dance 100% or have a backup plan that's more like a traditional college route. For example, business major or something and just continue dancing as more of a hobby side hustle. Honestly, any thoughts, insights you can give will be greatly appreciated. Also, I'd prefer to remain anonymous. Uh-huh. Anonymous. That's fine, Mary. Don't you worry about yeah. that. Um, P.S. I love your videos. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much. Okay. Love you too. Um, but yeah, I, I think we've kind of hit on all that because she said that she wants to commit to it. But obviously the, th- the thing is, school does come first and that's what I had to do. Like I'd go to dance classes on an evening and stuff. But then I had to do my college work. Yes, she did, you, yeah. Like, if you're serious about it, you have to tackle everything, which yeah. is why I think dancing is such a great thing in general for anybody, because it gives you so much discipline. Because you've got to really be able to manage your time from a young age. Yes, you do, yeah. Because while you were doing A-levels, you was doing a full-on show. Yeah. Like, we, we, like you still... don't get as much time off to see friends and stuff. And like, that's, no, ju- that's no. just something you've got to... It's part and parcel of the industry. You sound very much like you know what you want. You want to be a dancer. You can see yourself being a dancer. But obviously, you have got to get through school and college and stuff. That's just part and parcel. 
And I do think it is smart to always have a backup plan. Yes, it is, yeah. That's why I went to college. I did my A-levels. Like, I know a lot of dancers these days, in the UK specifically, I don't know about anywhere else, but in the UK, a lot of a lot of dancers are choosing to go to unis much earlier, like at 16. 16, yeah. Whereas I decided to wait till I was 18, which was the best idea, in my opinion, because realistically, I think it is a smart idea, not, not because of, like, anything to do with, like, your talent or anything... I just think in general, it's smart to keep your options open. Because who knows? You might decide that you want to be a dancer. You get into the industry, you see how vapid it can be and oversaturated and all these other things and intense. And then you might decide you don't want to be in it anymore. And then you've got a, you've got a second option. Also, why not go along to a couple of auditions? Mm. She might not like it. Mm. She might feel over her head and think, oh no, I can't do this. This is not for me. Don't matter if you're rubbish. Don't matter if you don't get picked. Mm. But on one of them, you might. But realistically, there, there is auditions for like younger younger people for like yeah. pantos and like, even yeah. even small ones like that. Like start auditioning just to see how you feel about it. Yeah. It is smart. Yeah. Because auditioning is, is something you got to get used to. And it's not all hunky dory. Oh, it's not because we know all about it. A lot of rejection. It. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of rejection. Of rejection yeah. so, you, so you've got like, I, I feel like the passion's definitely there. I think you are you are at the point where you really want to try hard, which I love it. I love that. Because you have got to get to that point to want to improve. But I think you need to now maybe start taking steps into seeing what it would be like if you did try and pursue it. Before fully diving in the deep end, have a look. see Because I think she might be over in America. Yeah. I'm not sure what there is in America um, in terms of like little auditions and stuff, but I'm sure there's like little shows, like more like small town shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, that you could like, I don't know, go to an audition or two if there is, a, is any. Didn't she say that she used to compete? I don't know. I'm pretty sure she used, She said that she used to compete, which is already a great thing. Competitions, that, that gets you well prepared for rejection. Mm hmm. Doesn't it? You're not going to win everything. No. You've been getting good feedback from teachers and fellow fellow pupils. That bodes well. I just think don't be too hard on yourself. I think continue to pursue it because you're clearly passionate about it, and it'd be wrong just to give it up and give it up as a like a uh, as a hobby. I think that would be a real shame. Because mm. how how who knows? In two years, three years, a lot can change. Uh, like you can get a lot better. Yeah. Like I literally started. I feel like I really started to apply myself at 14, 15. By 18, I was at one of the top ballet schools in the UK. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. But also, on the other hand, you don't actually need to go to a... No, you do not. ...college, university. Look at my sister. Yeah. Leah never did. Mm -mm. Leah took the route of... Teacher teach training. Trip. Yeah. She did a teacher training a couple of years. Because that was kind of her backup plan. To be a teacher. Because realistically, dance, then yeah, yeah, but then she's still in the dance industry. Yeah. So like that is smart. If you did want to have a backup plan, but you didn't want to be out of the industry, maybe get your qualifications in teaching or start teaching a few classes yeah. if you're able to at like yeah. a school or whatever. Go and volunteer for, yeah. for a while. Literally. Just get your foot in the door. Absolutely. So if yeah. you did want to have a backup plan, but you weren't really passionate about anything else, that's always a good one to fall back on because people are always wanting teachers. Mm. And she's doing business studies. Yeah. Which is brilliant. It goes hand in hand in my opinion. Yes, it does. Yeah. Because you never know. Definitely. You might end up wanting to have your own school. Yeah. All these things. And it all goes hand in hand. Being able to run a business would be great. Mm-hmm. So I, I think keep it up with your schoolwork. I think that's great. And, I, and and it's good to obviously get your qualifications. But I think, yeah, start exploring it a bit. And I think I, I do think apply yourself and take it serious. Because you never know. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to think, oh, I need to be the next big thing to be successful. There's always work. It just takes work. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? Takes it? a lot, yeah. But yeah, like my sister, for example, right? So she didn't go to uni. She didn't, she didn't like, get, um, like, a, a degree in it. She's currently over in Australia working for the most part of this year on a cruise ship. You don't have to go to college. So if you wanted to still pursue it, there's ways of doing that without having to get a full-on qualification in it. Yeah, yeah. So that's just another option. But yeah, I think that's... I think that's good. I think she's. I think we've given her a good amount. A good amount now. Yeah, she just needs to look into it more. Yeah. See what's out there. Yeah. See what's local to her. Yeah. Because we don't know where about she is. So yeah. We can't do that I for think, her. I but... think manage manage your expectations a little bit, but I, I like that you're passionate about it. I think it's and I like it's a good thing. I do think like continue with school. Yeah, for sure. Because and put your all into it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Fabulous. Well, I think we're good. Yeah. I think we've given some good advice here today. Um, sorry for all the interruptions, guys. I'll just say that if there's been some interruptions in the audio and whatnot, we've had a right time of it here today, trying to get people to be quiet. Um, but we're going to go now because I'm not sure how long this episode's been, but it's definitely been over an hour, potentially. Yes, and I've got a party to organise. She has. We've got people coming today for Maddie Moo's um, little one-year get-together. So we're going to go. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next week with another one. Um, and yeah, comment down below or let me know on social media or, or whatever if you want my mum to come back because she's always willing to be in an episode. And yeah. We may have to do it at yours. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine by me. You can come to me. That's fine. Um, but yeah. I'll love it, I'll leave you, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.